CC Time Blend and CC Time Blend effects actually can't be found in After Effects very easily. And the only reason why I know how any of this works is because of Brady over at Texture Labs who put together an amazing example of something that you can do with CC Time Blend effects. And you can check out that video in the card above to be amazed at what this effect actually can do. These are very old effects that became incompatible with an update to After Effects at one point, but they didn't actually go anywhere. They just don't show up in the effects list anymore. They should be in the time category, but the only way to actually access them now is by using a preset that just brings that effect in even though it's not showing up in this list. You can find a link to that preset in the description of this video. So instead of going to the time category, I'm just going to search for time blend and I have two animation presets, one for time blend and one for time blend effects. We'll start with time blend. And actually I'm gonna jump over to this video clip of a businessman doing a dance down the stairs. These two effects behave unlike anything else in After Effects. So it's a little bit difficult to comprehend what exactly is going on. And to be fully honest, I don't even completely understand it myself. Because of the way that the After Effects cache system works now, I don't think that there's any real way to use this with 100% confidence that it's going to do what you want it to. But what I'll do is apply it to this video clip. And the controls that we have are a transfer mode, which we have one of many different options, accumulation, and clear to. What this effect is going to do is take a look at the frame that we're currently on and store that in a buffer. It's gonna cache that frame and then go to the next frame and composite that previous frame with this new frame. And the transfer mode is how it's doing that compositing. So by default, it's set to blend. And if I just hit play, we're gonna get some flickering footage, but you can kind of see what's happening. If this flicker wasn't there, we're getting this very ghosty, echoey, trailing, repeating thing happening and some of the flames are flashing upside down. I don't really know what that's about. My best guess is that the cache of the effect is fighting with the cache of After Effects, but we can change this transfer mode to something else like maybe composite under. So we'll composite the original footage underneath the blended footage. And anytime that you change something with either of these effects, you really don't want your playhead to be out here with a bunch of cached frames. You want a clear cache at the start of your comp. So I've assigned the keyboard shortcut of Shift X to purge my cache, which you can do by going up to edit, purge all memory and disk cache. And you can see I went to my keyboard shortcuts and I set that up so it's easy to do. So Shift X will clear my cache and now I can play this back from a fresh cache and it's still a bit glitchy, but you can kind of see what this effect is trying to do. Now accumulation, if I go back to the beginning, this is basically how long that trail is going to last. So if I decrease that value and play it again, the trails will not be quite as long. And I can change my transfer mode to anything I want. If I want it to be maybe screen so it gets brighter, it's easy to do that. Now, like I said, I really don't know what's causing all the flickering to happen. I have not been able to successfully use this without that flickering side effect, but the CC Time Blend Effects effect doesn't have that issue. And it is a little bit more complicated, but it works in the same kind of a way. So I'm gonna find that Time Blend again, and I'm actually going to make a new adjustment layer this time and apply CC Time Blend Effects to it. So we'll call this Time Blend Effects. And we need two instances of this effect in order for it to work, one to copy and one to paste. So I'm gonna duplicate this effect and on the top copy, it's actually going to be paste and then copy. Now, if I put any effect between these two instances, the current frame is going to be stored in that cache, in that image buffer, and then on the next frame, blended together using the transfer mode we have set here. So let me show you what happens if I just add, say, a transform effect right between these two and I change the scale to 98, just a small amount of scale change, and I play. You see how it just kind of scaled down? It's gonna be a lot easier to see, actually, if I turn off that background and go back to the beginning. I'm getting some flash frames, let me clear that cache. But what's happening is that it's taking that first frame, applying the 98% scale, going to the next frame, blending that previous frame, and then scaling it down by 98% again. And then it stores that frame in the cache, goes to the next frame, and repeats the process. It's a loop. Whatever you put between these two is going to be an adjustment that takes place on every frame, compounding throughout your entire timeline. So I'm gonna go to the beginning of the comp, and let's do something else, like add a hue and saturation right after the transform and just change that hue value ever so slightly. Now if I play back, not only is it scaling down, but the colors are also shifting. I could make that a little bit more extreme and play again, and now we're getting way more of a rainbow kind of animation happening. 
And if you don't want it to be quite so transparent, then you can change this clear to from transparent to current frame. And this is basically going to take that unaltered frame and put it in front first. So now if I play this back, it's gonna be a lot more clear at the beginning. Now I can do more to this. It doesn't have to be just that simple scale. I could say move my logo over to this side, add a position keyframe as well as a rotation keyframe, go forward maybe two seconds move it to this side of the screen and rotate it around one revolution and I'll just easy ease these keyframes, go back to the beginning and clear my cache, play that back and see what happens. So a very trippy echoey effect and if I wanted to resolve that animation, I could say set a keyframe on accumulation, go forward a little bit and turn that all the way down to zero. Now if I go to the beginning and play this back, it's going to resolve at the end there. Just keep in mind that any effects you apply in here, even if your accumulation is set to zero, will still be active by the end of it. So you might wanna keyframe that down or add, say, a CC composite effect right after this. So if I search for CC composite and I apply that to my adjustment layer and I'm going to uncheck RGB only so I have that alpha channel, I'll clear my cache again and play this back. And now my logo is going to be unaltered always on top of that affected version with the CC Time Blend effects. And you might have noticed that this is not nearly as glitchy as CC Time Blend. Again, I don't know why, but it just seems to be a little bit more stable and play a little bit better with After Effects Cache. Now there are basically an unlimited amount of possibilities that you can create with this effect because whatever you put into here is going to give you a different result. So don't be afraid to experiment with adding different effects in here, like optics compensation, for example, or any of these distortion effects where you can just make a slight adjustment and then that'll be compounded over time. So if I just increase this value until I see it start to change and then I play this back, it's going to add that amount of distortion across the entire comp on every frame. So let me move my logo over even further and then move these accumulation keyframes forward in time a little bit so we can see it last a little longer and play this back one more time. And now we've got that optics compensation coming into effect as well. It's actually a lot of fun to just play around with different effects in here and see how it changes what you've done in your comp over time. So don't be afraid to just start applying effects and seeing what happens with them. If I had to pick, I'd say these two effects are the most unusual effects in After Effects but that's everything you need to know about CC Time Blend and CC Time Blend effects. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.